you were speaking on their behalf. Well, if we can carry on, we can much away, because this is informal. I'll have to ask Major Gordon if I may do so. 
But he was an A company. He was my platoon commander for three years. We trained him. Boy, I was hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly enough, the uh, senior NCOs trained all the officers. They didn't appreciate that. We figured we trained four officers. I'll go along with that. I think you did. Most of the time, I, I did what the sergeant told me to do. I'll tell you one thing. It's outnumbered now, so it'll be an interesting. Uh, we can pick on it. One of the few people that ever asked, what do you do? What's the best way to approach the issue? Who is this? Oh, yeah. Did you do something? Did you say, what's the best way to approach this? Because as a group, all our lives are on the line. That's right. Absolutely right. You do this, you do that. Then we took them out. That's right. Unfortunately, most of them still have to go back. I said, no, no, we can't do that. We've got to go ahead. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there was one thing that I learned. General, there. I thought it was just going to tell about one thing. If you're going on that trip on May the 29th, and you go to Boulogne, on the top of the hill at St. Martin's on the hill, there's a big church. And we were cut off there the night when we were attacking Boulogne. And uh, we had uh, our casualties there. And the nuns looked after the wounded. And there might be just a chance if you spoke to somebody there, there might be somebody that would remember. Uh, I was there in 53, but I never got a chance to, to speak to anyone. Is that the church that's got the park on the wall? I don't know why. I, I, I know that's at Lack of Pell. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, this is St. Martin's on the hill. Yeah, it's just uh, go, go there. Go to Lack of Pell. We lost quite a bit. Well, that's what we were at the start when it was like. That's, that's right. where Art Richardson lost his leg at Lack of Pell. Yeah. And he was over on the uh, four or five buried up there on the left yeah. side of the road, and we were in a farmyard on the right hand the side when Major Price got it. I don't know. Head there. Well, Captain the water wagon was killed that day, and uh, Ronnie Knowles was killed then, yeah. Yeah. and uh, Art lost his leg, and uh, well, Lieutenant Poist was killed in there. There's one other one. Oh, yeah. Remember Lee Van in that little expedition? Poist was killed, and uh, his yeah. Batman was killed. And, that was Snake uh, Dude. The Snake thing, they call it. Mm -hmm. Snake Horse. They sent us out on that. It was <laughs> a platoon. And two carriers, and uh, I think it was about a total of about 30 of us went. How long did you last, Jimmy? Really? I got as far as uh, Boy yeah. on the hills of uh, Mount Lambert, just before we were on the day the day we attacked Boulogne. That first morning, I got hit <coughs> when uh, what's his name Sawyer, the, mm -hmm. the lieutenant, oh, got yeah. killed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got yeah. hit. Oh, sorry, he was coming in. Yeah. Company was taking the staff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got shot through the gut. Yeah. Well, at Boulogne there, the Germans were entrenched in a monastery there, and uh, the typhoons and hurricanes had been bombing this place for days and days. They couldn't penetrate the place at all. But the mortar platoon went and fired a mortar bomb, and it went right up and down the chimney, and they had their magazine at the <laughs> underneath and blew the, and blew the thing to blazes there. And uh, the guy who uh, in charge of that one was Sergeant Corrigan, so they, they always called him One Shot Corrigan. <laughs> After that, you want to quit. You could fire there for a month and you'd never do the same never thing. Do it no. there, were many, there were many occasions when uh, the junior NCOs and the senior NCOs uh, were called upon to uh, do things that they shouldn't have had to have done because of uh, the uh, uh, some of the men that you had with you, they were gawking around and uh, not paying attention to what they were supposed to be doing. And at uh, Boeing, uh, there was a bunch of houses and, and we were hiding in these houses. And uh, directly in front of us, was a uh, an aircraft gun that he was firing over his barrel. He was had the barrel right down and was firing over the barrel. 
and I told the guys to get away from the windows because they were attracting the fire. This one fella says, yeah, I'll come in a minute, and he stayed there a minute or two longer, and the next thing I knew, the shell hit the house directly in front of him, tore off half his face, and uh, um, I, they, I said, told one or two, men, two of the men to go up and get him. And they said, you get more money than I do, you go get him. <laughs> So uh, I had to go up and bring him back, and um, we went out the back door and over the fence, and uh, the fellow that was next to me threw the burn gun that he had was carrying over the fence, and it dug into the, the soft ground and around there. We couldn't get the damn thing out. <laughs> we had to spend a few minutes digging this bear, this damn burn gun out of there. And uh, we took them, I took them back to the R.A.P. and they looked after them, but he well, lost quite a bit of his face. One of the big drawbacks at that time, after the beach, between there and the column of the show, was reinforcements. We oh, yeah. could not get reinforcements. There was two or three hundred thousand in uniform back here in Canada, but only for Canadian service. They couldn't get them over as reinforcements. And regiments that yeah. normally fought at an average of 600 men were fighting at two or 300. Mm -hmm. Well, I was telling uh, Major Simonson, when I come out of the hospital, I went into the personnel selection. That's uh, fitting round pegs, or round pegs in square holes. Anyway, around about Christmas time, this young lad came up, and he looked though he should have been still in school, maybe public school. He admitted to being 17. His folks were dead. Nobody really cared about him. I figured he was 15, maybe 16. He was a big kid, but he was young. Anyway, further, he'd been in the Army 12 weeks. He was overseas. Now 12 weeks, one week getting kitted with his needles. One week, There's like a vacation leave, one week traveling, that left nine weeks training. He had fired his rifle, he never had it zero, there was no armor on the, on the range when he fired his rifle. He didn't know what a mortar was, he didn't know what a 36 was. He'd seen a brand gun, and he was going out as a trained replacement. I wonder how long it lasts. But it's interesting. Yeah, I can tell you one just like it. But it lasted 24 hours. But, you know, this kid, he had absolutely, what you learned in seven, or nine, nine weeks in the Army, your right foot from your left, how to salute, stand to attention, that's say sir to your officers, and that's about what you learned in, in the Do first any time. Do any of you remember when we got the uh, medical corps as reinforcements? No, I wasn't. I was long gone. I we, got, we, got, uh, we got Navy, a yeah. fellow with bell-bottom trousers and an Army tunic. Yeah. We got Air Force as reinforcements. Do you remember that? Because yeah. we couldn't get our own reinforcements over here. And we got these Canadian... <clears throat> The one that, what do they call them here? Back the infantry. Yeah. This kid that oh, I'm talking about. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a better one than that. When the, uh, okay, let's call them. Zombies start coming in. Exactly, yeah. They were coming in late February, early March. The zombies were very well trained. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you hey, you hey, 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 you'll, you'll like this, Charlie. <coughs> this guy come in. He was a zombie. He was there against with better wishes. You could see on his sleeve where he had done an RSM. He'd been acting all the way. He had eight groups trade pay as a clerk. He was going up as a GI replacement the day he landed the unit. Because there was no room for an eight group trade pay clerk in the unit, he was going to lose that. And I had to, you know, I mean, he was, he knew he'd lost his pay which was, what, six bucks a day was in RSM? And uh, he was going up with the six bits a day trades pay over about basic scale. But it was rather interesting, you know, which, this is how I tell you, because it seems it difficult. The men we got in those reinforcements, you know, uh, from D Company, I can read quite a few of them by name, you know. 
like John Kay, Mattel, uh, Prince Boy, uh, Kerr, Crew, Nava Jesus, like David Moore. But these men aren't we found them that they once they've been with a section a week. They were right there doing a good job. The same well, I'm sure. That was back in the June, though, wasn't it, Charlie? Well, they, good, they did a good, that's as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. That was in June, though, with like our No, 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 that was, uh, well, take Cal Murray and Brown. They were both reinforcements that came in just before the show. Uh, and uh, Bob Dunstan was another that came in. as well, a Cousins came in as a reinforcement. Mm -hmm. Cousins? The cousins came in as a reinforcement. Like, uh, well, put this way. When we finished Boulogne, we only had 10% of our original company left. So we had 90% reinforcement. Oh. And we had 80% reinforcement going into Boulogne. And uh, my, uh, I have to be honest, I, every man there did his job. Yeah, but Charlie, if they survived, if they survived the first week, they were probably battle-hardened. Well, if I see... I think that in uh, you know, these cases, when you get a new man, the corporal and the sergeant, and uh, the, the NCO is, is responsible to see that she's looked after for that first week, you know. You don't, uh, you don't say right on patrol, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you, uh, you, you just use a little judgment. You know. But I uh, just for the, now this man, this, this, coming back to my old account, saying, me, as far as they could be concerned, we had 90% reinforcement in, in the shell. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. and nine, nine hundred, nine, ninety-eight percent after the 26th of February, we were all reinforced. Well, you know, you're talking reinforcement, what's your strength? Art Richardson told me he was leading a platoon, a new officer, he was platoon sergeant. And the units were leaving a British outfit. And the British Army being what it was, Art's only a sergeant, and the officer won't talk to him. So the sergeant's taking him around, showing him where the, the position is. Now, Art's got his men with him. And the sergeant said, uh, well, where's the other two sections? Art's leading nine men. This was the situation far too long. Uh, I've talked to too many people that uh, the platoons were under strike. Well, I was always under strike. Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, uh, what Jim was saying, there's 200,000 of the back here trained. And I can honestly say, since the days of Mackenzie came in before, I've never voted liberal and I don't have a category liberal in my life. I spoiled my ballot first. But uh, what he he did, his cohorts, the, the Canadian Army, was pathetic. I can remember we're at Roman Way Convalescent, it was 300 clean zone there in late August, early September. I remember Colonel Lett coming back to the CIDR, begging the guys to give up their category and go back. Some of them did. Well, you have the experience dies. That's what well, I was in a position, I've been asked, I was in a position that was on the mother of the 2CITR. I was on a draft and I was pulled off. We're standing waiting for the transport. I was taken on a strength CMHQ to personnel selection post to conduct the 2CITR. And I went up to see if I going back to the unit. It was, uh, wasn't the best place in the world to be. Uh, my friends weren't there. And I was told to mind my own business, you're on CMA skew strength, and you're not going to get off. That was the truth. Part of the Army bureaucracy. Well, I think the, the, well, whole, the whole Canadian Army at that time, put their little strength, little, uh, not getting the reinforcements. I think if they should have, uh, if they weren't going to send us the reinforcements, they should have pulled us in. Or amalgamated the units. They, no, they, they, they didn't have the reinforcements to support five divisions, two corps, and one army. But just before we close, I think I'm at that point. I don't think anybody disagrees with you. 
But the regiment still did its job oh, and did it well. Yes, uh, uh, yeah. 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 Not that was our job. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, 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 whatever was, was asked, asked but they, they, got, they, did. Did. they got no yeah. support. They got yeah. no support from well, the, the, the Ottawa or the bureaucracy. May I say, gentlemen, thank you very much for your contribution tonight. I think the commanding officer will be very justifiably pleased to, at what you've heard. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed, to frankly. I'm absolutely flabbergasted at the memory that these fellows have. I knew you had it in you, sir. That's why we wanted to arrange this. Well, not me. I, I couldn't remember half of it. But the names that these chaps are coming up with, you know, it's, it's just fantastic. Charlie here, particularly. He's a walking encyclopedia. Well, I hope uh, that we can agree that we should have follow-up sessions, you know, a couple hours at a time, pace ourselves, and uh, just let the camera fly and well, the time's as well. Provide something to uh, <laughs> wet our lips and feed us. <laughs> well, I think, no reason why we won't. I thank you very much for the education. <laughs> thank you. Uh, try some of this for on your... For taking the time out of here in our story. Try some of this on your roses. It makes them grow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. There's a lot of places and people that have never heard what we've been talking about tonight. Yeah. Uh, sir, sir, are you through with that? Still right now? Run right to the end. He's going to turn the thing. Let it roll. Let it roll. It's all messed in. There's no need to. Messed in. I like that. <laughs> First time my, yeah, well, my, my wife heard that. After we come over, I thought it was a little bit of a little bit of yeah, no, 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 no. I married a troll girl. And uh, she says, what's this mess they're talking about? And I said, well, if you've ever seen military eating utensils, you'll know. She says, well, I don't know what it is. I said, that's going to be the So tell us the story of mess The nickname is Dick Well, I only weighed 100 pounds. We can't take you. You're not a, a, a rifleman. Oh, and I said, sir, I said, are you one of those guys who have that thing out there? And I said, I didn't, but I said, he was my runner. And he said, okay, he says, you go to have lunch and come back, he says, and I'll weigh you a When I come back, I had stones in my pocket. So he said, okay, he says, you put on three pounds, now I'll take you. Shorty, Shorty, Rob, Shorty was about five foot nothing. We were in the DR. And uh, um, we won't say how, who all peed and how many bottles for other people, but uh, uh, surprised how many guys have been throwing up and we're trying to get in again. No, but one of the things that we but you take us guys. Some of them were born up in the farm, up north in Dutch, just above Toronto and West Bell, through there. Jack Martin lived down in Cabbage Town. I lived in Baby Danner. And we were all right from the south part of Ontario, Toronto at that particular time. Is that a Saturday or Friday? We just gathered together. And I'm sorry, I've never heard of you. I've never heard of you. These guys, uh, uh, Jack, Jack in particular, his wife and my wife are just like this. We play cards all the time. Uh, this has been going on for 50 years. Oh, where can you find him? And then when, when he moves up north, I moved up north and I turned him out there. Yeah, the second It's been like that all the time. Yeah, it's good to stay together. Anyhow, it was, it's been a nice night. I enjoyed it. Well, it's very well, it's given us the opportunity to say things while spending our minds that we never ever saw. What do you do? The first thing I'll say is it's on that wall. They don't want to talk to you right away.